Today we're getting into the latest Tesla news, including Cybertruck colors and sightings, Tesla safety updates, semi breakdowns, and more, so let's get into it. First up today, Tesla is pushing a few new software features for their cars and app. In the Tesla app, there are a lot of great features, but when you want to route or see your complete route with supercharger stops, you are only able to do that in the vehicle. Now this is changing. When using navigation in your car, you can see the car's location, nearby chargers, and destination details from the app. This and more has actually been in the app for a little while now, but Tesla is adding another aspect here. It will now show the suggested route the vehicle is taking to reach its destination. My hope is that if Eventually, Tesla will improve this so that you can route just like you would in the vehicle, but from the Tesla app seeing all of the charging stops and choosing the best route before you even get into the car. Another small feature arriving in the car is a dedicated app for the user manual. Tesla includes the manual on screen, but now it's a dedicated app with two sections. First is get to know your Tesla. Quote, this section is designed to be an interactive and user-friendly way for new and existing Tesla owners to familiarize themselves with their car's features. It includes buttons that when pressed can perform actions such as opening the glove box or activating the windshield wipers. I'm very curious to see this in action and it looks like something that could be very helpful for new owners in particular. Then there's the owner's manual that has been there for a while. One interesting change for the user manual is that the weight distribution and max weights have been updated for the front trunk and rear trunk areas. The updated guidelines show 110 pounds for the front trunk, 88 pounds for the rear trunk lower compartment, and 287 pounds for the rear trunk upper floor. These apply for all of Tesla's vehicles. Next up today, one big change is currently happening for Tesla's lowest priced vehicle. Since the beginning of the year, this car has qualified for a $7,500 tax credit, but since battery requirements from the IRS are finally coming into place after March, Tesla now says, quote, $7,500 tax credit is anticipated to be reduced for Model 3 take delivery now. Tesla further adds that, note, this credit is in effect for deliveries taken before an update to the federal guidance, which Treasury and the IRS intend to issue no later than March 31st, 2023. So those taking delivery of this rear-wheel drive Model 3 at the time this is going up or later won't qualify for that credit. That's because Tesla uses a different battery chemistry in the standard range Model 3 compared to the long range, and it's sourced from CATL in China. This disqualifies it from the EV tax credit, so the assumption here has been that Tesla may adapt and source their LFP cells in the US sometime in the future. This is the goal of the strict EV battery requirements, and it seems to now be working. A new report says that Tesla is going Going to produce LFP cells within the US by partnering with CATL. LFP cells are great because they don't use any nickel or cobalt and are cheaper and safer. That said, they typically bring less energy density, which is why we only see them in standard range Teslas right now. They're also mainly made in China. So now, quote, the EV maker discussed plans involving Contemporary Amperex Technology Co. Limited with the White House in recent days. Overall, this report doesn't have too many details aside from the possible location of that factory being in Texas. This would make Make a lot of sense as Tesla has their headquarters in Texas now. It will take some time, but ultimately this would solve the problem at hand, move Tesla's LFP battery production to the US, and allow the cheapest Tesla to once again qualify for the $7,500 EV tax credit. Definitely an interesting move, especially as Tesla is moving forward making their own battery cells with 4680s. However, it's clear that they still want to partner with others on batteries, especially when it helps their growing production goals. Next up today, we have some new Cybertruck updates, including evidence that Tesla is planning for multiple Cybertruck colors. First, there's been another Cybertruck spotted in the wild. It was driving out on city streets, but it appears Tesla was testing its turning abilities. This is a massive truck, so Tesla has been implementing strategies to help improve its turning radius, like four-wheel steering. GMC introduced four-wheel steering on the Hummer EV in a feature they called Crab Walk. They revealed this over a year ago, so Tesla is definitely wanting to compete here and make the car as functional as possible. We saw four-wheel steering being tested a while ago, and now we're seeing it being tested on public roads. The Kilowatts posted a video of the prototype and said, following this thing for a couple blocks yesterday felt like chasing a warthog in Halo. I totally get the CGI in real life thing now. Here you can see it undergoing some agility testing with some pretty aggressive wheel shaking. Elon responded to the video saying, perhaps better than a Y in turning. 
that would be extremely impressive considering the Cybertruck is 44 inches longer and could be up to 2,000 pounds heavier than the Model Y. Here's the Cybertruck doing that U-turn again, and you can see it manages to make it in two lanes, but it does somewhat go over that line. I'm wondering if that's the tightest turning radius it can get, because the Model Y following it does manage to turn a little tighter. Just before the camera pans away, you can see that rear wheel turning to the right to compensate for the turn. It's subtle, but very, very cool to see. This updated prototype also has the new side mirrors, as well as the giant windshield wiper. Then a prototype was spotted again near Tesla's Fremont factory. This one also has the updated triangle angular mirrors, but it's unclear if it has the windshield wiper. Then a different prototype was spotted that clearly did not have this wiper. An owner posted this photo on a Cybertruck owner's forum, and it appears this one has the wiper installed, but it's been removed. If you look closely, you can see the bottom of the mechanism sticking out of the front trunk. It's possible this could mean they're changing how the wiper functions, but there are a number of reasons why they would just be out there testing with it removed. Tesla plans to bring this truck to production this summer, so we're seeing prototypes that are very close to their final form but there is still time for changes to be made. Many order holders would be happy with that if they were able to change this wiper because it's not the best look. Regarding the color of the Cybertruck, Tesla unveiled it in stainless steel, and it has been pretty clear that they do not plan to paint this truck. Not only will it come in a stock color, but painting would be unnecessary and an extra cost for production. That said, when asked in April of 2020 if the Cybertruck would have colors, Elon said, you will be able to wrap it in any color or pattern. Then when asked about Tesla offering wraps on the Cybertruck at launch, Elon said not at first, but there are many third-party options for wrapping. He said this back in December of 2021, and it looks like that now may be changing. As Tesla is approaching Cybertruck production, we're seeing a ton of positions open up at their Texas factory, continuing to see equipment installed, and seeing prototypes in the wild. Amongst the slew of jobs directly related to Cybertruck manufacturing in Giga Texas, Tesla has officially posted seven jobs that all specifically relate to Cybertruck paint. This is confusing since they have been pretty clear that they won't plan to paint this truck, and we're not even sure how that would work. The jobs include production supervisor, paint, production associate manager, manufacturing engineer, equipment engineer, process engineer, automation engineer, and controls engineer. Overall, the listings are fairly vague, but some detail paint even further. For example, process engineer engineer says, we are hiring process engineers to support Cybertruck. Our paint process engineers are technical subject matter experts of their assigned process. They will be expected to support the most effective methods of processing while improving cycle times, reducing downtime, lowering costs, and driving improvements in overall paint quality in order to ensure the continued performance of the process. Hearing the words paint quality in there is definitely pretty interesting to see. In the job listing for controls engineer, it says they will be responsible for a number of things including process slash equipment monitoring systems within our paint shop. This role will support Cybertruck specifically. So this job specifically supports the Cybertruck paint shop. It adds even more question to the idea that Tesla won't be painting the Cybertruck in any way. Tesla has been working hard on improving their paint, introducing new colors at their world-class paint shop in Germany, and introducing ultra red in the US, but it's definitely unexpected to see these jobs relating to the Cybertruck. Based on the listing alone, it does seem like Tesla may be planning for paint on the Cybertruck. Seemingly, they'd offer stainless steel and then a few other options. Wraps are more time-consuming and expensive and likely not the optimized production method that Tesla themselves wants to go for. At the same time though, these jobs could be listed as paint and simply relate to the final step of the process Tesla puts on the Cybertruck body. Maybe that will end up being paint, maybe it will end up being a wrap, but maybe it will simply be a specific coating that protects the body of the car the same way paint does without changing the color in any way. Anything could happen, but I'm very curious to know why they are hiring specifically for a Cybertruck paint shop. Hopefully we'll know more in the coming weeks and months, and it would be pretty wild to see a Cybertruck prototype out on the road painted with one of Tesla's classic five colors. Next up today, a few updates regarding Tesla and safety. NHTSA has officially begun investigating 50,000 Model Xs made between 2022 and 2023. They are doing so after two complaints related to the front seatbelt detaching. According to NHTSA, quote, the two allegations indicate that the connection failure occurred at this point. In both cases, the pretensioner and the linkage were not properly connected during assembly, resulting in friction fit maintaining the connection between the two until eventual separation. The linkage and the pretensioner suddenly separated 
separated when the force exerted on the linkage overcame the resistance of the friction fit while the vehicles were in motion. From here, NHTSA will continue investigating and determine whether or not these are isolated incidents or whether they should proceed further by issuing an official recall. Oftentimes, Tesla recalls involve a software update, but clearly this would be one that would require a service appointment for affected cars. Regarding the safety of occupants in a Tesla when parked, Elon Musk recently responded to a tweet asking for a new feature in software. It looks like it will be coming soon through a software update to all Teslas. Tesla Divas said, quote, I left my teenager and little in the car to go into the store. The car instantly shut off and my oldest had to touch the screen to turn it back on. If an infant was left, the car would shut down. Can y'all do something to detect people in the car and keep temp on? One thing to note is that an option here would be to ensure that you press keep for the climate controls and that should do exactly what they're asking for. Still, it could be good to have this car do it automatically and Elon responded saying, quote, Tesla car temp is automatically kept within a safe range even when the car appears off in order to protect infants and pets. That said, it would be more convenient to keep the car on for entertainment and comfort if the camera detects occupants. We will make that change. This is something I've noticed and would like to see improved. If I run into the store and my wife wants climate to remain on, she does have to turn the screen back on by tapping, so this would definitely make sense long term for anyone in these situations specifically regarding occupant safety. Those issues relate to consumer vehicles, but for the Tesla Semi, Tesla appears to be dealing with some glitches that cause the vehicles to shut down. Each time a Tesla Semi has been spotted on the side of the road, it grabs headlines, and according to Tesla Rati, quote, at least some of the, quote, breakdowns are caused by a glitch within a software switch, and drivers are pulling over voluntarily as a precaution because the dash screens will flicker and sometimes shut off. Of course, this is a safety issue, with the screen flickering or going dark since it has essential information, but the pulling over itself seems to be a precaution taken by drivers. Tesla Rati's source said they don't know what to do, so they just pull over, and then they are towed. Reportedly, they are towed to a secret location in Lathrop, California for inspection and repair. This is likely near Tesla's Megapack factory in that same city, and one tow truck driver said they've towed at least four semis to that location so far themselves. Some of this is expected in an early launch of an entirely new vehicle, and these issues seem to be software-related rather than hardware-related, but they're not good to see nonetheless. In Tesla Rati's opinion, the big picture is that vehicles break down and new vehicles sometimes have issues that need to be ironed out. It doesn't mean the product is a failure or that the semi is doomed to be a dud. It's the growing pains of the semi operation. Next up today, Tesla has hired a new expert in battery manufacturing to help solve the issues they've been having with their 4680 cells. Back in 2020, Tesla announced the 4680 battery as an advancement that would help them increase efficiency and reduce costs in the long run. The main way they had planned to do this was with a new dry electrode coating process. They said it would be a 10x reduction in footprint and a 10x reduction in energy usage. Others have said it would reduce the cost of a battery pack by thousands. When they acquired the technology though, it wasn't finished being refined and Model Y that are currently being made with 4680 battery packs still aren't where they need to be yet. In September, Reuters reported that it was halfway there, and it's the main obstacle Tesla is facing when it comes to ramping production. Now they've hired a new mechanical engineer who worked at 24M, a competing battery manufacturer. That manufacturer developed a similar technology that they call semi-solid electrodes. According to their website, those electrodes, quote, use no binder mixing electrolyte with active materials to form a clay-like slurry. The unique slurry allows us to create thick electrodes with less volume, mass, and cost while enabling a simpler manufacturing process. It's simpler and safer with more reliable performance. There are definitely differences between this tech and Tesla's 4680 cells, so this new engineer, Matt Tyler, should be able to offer some new insight. He was the vice president of advanced manufacturing there, responsible for managing that project, and is now Tesla's director of dry electrode development. Last up today, some updates from other automakers. Over at Ford, while Tesla has been lowering prices, they are once again raising the price of the F-150 Lightning. That truck has been out for some time and overall is performing well, but the original base price was supposed to be $41,769. Now, in a string of regular price increases, they've added another $4,000, bringing the base price of the F-150 Lightning up to $61,869. That's about $20,000 that this truck has increased in pricing since its launch, and the only real difference 
difference here is that they're ramping up production further. They also have raised the price of every single trim, but the higher trims saw smaller increases, around $1,000 or $2,000. They have reopened order books for the next wave of reservation holders after pausing shipments due to a battery issue that needed fixing. That means that people already with reservations can lock in their official orders, but it will be at that new higher pricing. This is something Rivian did and took a lot of flack for, but their situation was a bit different, holding a $1,000 pre-order for a very long time. What will be very interesting to see is what the price of the Cybertruck comes in at when it arrives, and whether or not we'll essentially see the same level of price increases from Tesla. Kia has officially unveiled their EV9 SUV. This is their second all-electric model after their crossover EV6 and will share its eGMP platform. Kia estimates the long-range rear-wheel drive model will get 336 miles of range WLTP, converted to EPA that will probably end up being around 300 miles. That one will have a 99.8 kilowatt hour battery and be available in all-wheel drive also, and the standard range will have a 76.1 kilowatt hour battery only available in rear-wheel drive. The all-wheel drive variant is estimated to get a 0 to 60 in under 6 seconds. Kia confirmed that both these variants will be available in North America and will likely be starting around $56,000. This SUV is competing directly with the Rivian R1S, which starts at $78,000, so if it actually delivers a 300-mile range, it'll be very competitive. Over at Nissan, they've teased a new EV concept called the GTR R3. It seems to be based on their popular sports car, the Nissan Skyline GTR, first introduced in 1969. Their official Twitter account posted a video teasing the back end of the concept and said, quote, Nissan will challenge the production of an EV prototype of the R32 Skyline GTR. The audio attached to the video sounds like an engine being started, and you can see the tailpipe on the back of the vehicle. That suggests they're probably early in the process here, or they're really trying to replicate a gasoline vehicle. This would be their third EV after the Leaf release in 2011 and the Aria, which entered production last year. Their goal is to introduce 18 more fully electric vehicles by 2030 in addition to the GTR. This definitely would be a very cool car to see out on the road, so I hope we hear more about it soon and it doesn't just end up being a lost concept. That's all the latest Tesla news for today, so in the meantime, if you want to see all the new features coming to the refreshed Model 3, you can check out that video linked up here or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.